So I just want to run this uh, by you guys. The Lord gave me this this evening. What happens when personality begins to dic dictate what Christianity is? This is a huge problem in the church. We have people's personalities and preferences and then traditions dictating what Christianity is. And we say, well, if you don't line up with my preference, then God's not in it. We could, we could see God moving in something, but if it doesn't match our personality, for example, you go to some churches, if you travel a lot, you'll see some people, they, they get in the spirit and it's always like that sad kind of music and then crying and God's moving in that. But then what will happen is they'll look at a church where they're dancing and they're, they're turning up for Jesus and they'll say, you know, no, no, God's not in this, but really it's just their preference. And often people will go to the church that matches their preference. They will follow and connect a pastor that matches their preference, right? And this is a big, big, big problem, right? You'll often see that most churches, they reflect the personality and character of the pastor, especially the, the group that's really connected, you know, the engine that's making um, that church run. And so the problem is you got to make sure that your preferences are not killing the move of God. You know, the Christian rap thing, I use it all the time. I've seen God use it. I've seen Christian rap concerts where people are getting saved and the spirit of God move. But some people, because it's not their preference, they say, oh, that's of the world. No, God moves in it. OK, so here's the thing. You don't want to miss out on an experience from God or a move of God because of your preconceived ideas. Some of your some have religious mindsets. Right. And we think, well, God can only move like this. And I've talked about this before, you know, I'm used to God speaking through the burning bush. But then when he comes in a different form or a different way through a prophet or how he spoke to Paul on the Damascus road, people say, oh, that's not of God because, no, he always moves through the burning bush. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct them, but we have the mind of Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight, not by what I feel, not by what I think, but faith, which cometh by what? Hearing the word of God. So you got to make sure you're not doing what Peter did. He, he had good intentions, but when he cut off that guy's ear, it wasn't God's will. Pharisees and Sadducees, they killed Jesus because he didn't come how they thought he should come. God is about to move in a lot of ways that a lot of people are like, man, I see the fruit. I see people getting saved, but that's just not how we do it. And they're going to try to shut it down. And it's going to really test their hearts. Because do you want souls to be saved or do you want to be the center of attention? Right? Do you want a mighty move of God or do you want the move of God to be because of you, right? Oh, I, you know, I, because of what I did, because of how I labored, because of what I put together. That's why we have this move of God. People really think like that. They, they put themselves so highly that their ideas become idols. And it's like, we can't have a move of God unless it's by their rules on their timeline and their schedule. God's not pleased with that because we handcuff him. Maybe he wants to do something. Maybe you're one of those churches where you, you guys don't really dance. You don't really, you know, uh, you know, praise like that. And, and the Lord says in his word, you know, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Maybe you need to experience that. And so some of us, we're not experiencing the, the, just the, the fullness of God that we can because we're so stuck to just one way. We're not seeing the revival that we should see because we're so stuck to one way. We're not seeing the move of God because we're so stuck to one way. Different keys open different doors. And some of us have just been using the same key forever and ever and ever. And the Lord is saying, no, I want to change that. You know, just because it's your personality doesn't mean that it's right. God often changes our personality throughout the Bible. We're, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. He changes the way we see things, the way that, that we respond. Maybe you weren't such a joyful person, but then he gave you joy and now you want to dance. Maybe you were such a hard guy that you weren't used to, you know, um, repenting and being broken. But now you're at the altar repenting and being broken. But you don't want to close it off and, oh, that's not who I am. That's not how I do it, especially as a pastor and a leader of God. This is just the way we got to do it. That's religion. Now, I understand there's standards in the word of God that we have to follow. But I'm talking about preferences. I'm talking about, oh, you, you know, some people want to argue about the outward appearance. Right. And then here's the problem. You'll see you'll see people um, moving in, in the spirit and being effective 
but because they don't look like you, nah, I can't, that's, that's not right with God. But then if you ask them, you say, hey, do you think those people are going to hell because they don't look like you on the outward appearance? And they say, no. So you're saying it doesn't really matter to God. And I don't want some of you to take this the wrong way. Modesty does matter to God. But I'm just talking about the way that we sometimes can judge people and put our standards and our preferences and our opinions and our convictions on other people. And we make it a doctrine. And that's when it becomes a problem. When your preferences become a doctrine and the, the standard of what Christianity is, we have an issue. Because there's a difference between your preference and the word of God. There's even a difference between the word of God and the way that you interpreted it. So that's just something to think about. I think we should all take time and just say, Lord, you know, is there anything about my vision or my perspective that is not lining up with your will and your way and your word? Whether it's politics, whether it's how we run the church, whether it's how we deal with people, whether it's how we enter into worship, how we approach doing revivals and ministry, whatever it is, we all got to pray, Lord, don't let my preferences blind me from what you want to do. Don't allow the traditions that I was taught to blind me from the move of God. Lord, I want to be able to recognize when you move. Maybe you come in a way that I'm not used to. Maybe you come in a way that's unfamiliar. But Lord, I want to be able to recognize it. But at the same time, I don't want to be deceived by something false. I pray that all the time. I say, Lord, just keep me, Lord. I, I don't care what everybody else got going on, Lord. Whatever you have for me, whatever you want for me, that's what I want to flow in pray that all the time it's something you should really uh just think about praying daily lord just just keep me father i want to be in the truth i, I want to be in the the right path i don't care what other people are talking about what other people are arguing about lord just keep me all right love you guys be blessed be encouraged have a wonderful evening in jesus name